and we're live! How's it going everyone and welcome to my office space. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a deep dive into the data on the chisel test. Uh, now I put out the video on the main channel, uh, well it came out earlier today, where we actually go into the detail of the chisel test and uh, um, break it down into its basic information so that people can kind of get an idea and draw some conclusions from it. But today I actually want to spend some time and go live and actually go into the data on the spreadsheet. Uh, so I'm going to start this off by actually going through the, the spreadsheet and explaining some of it and showing some of the things that have come out of it uh, because there have been a lot of other questions and other things like that that have popped out. Um, so I want to answer some of those questions on here. Also, if you have any particular questions or things that came out for you, something you'd like to see, let me know those and we will be uh, we'll be covering those as well. So uh, oops, let me bring this down out of the way so you can actually see the data sheet here. Um, I'll leave there's a link to this in the description down below uh, so you can go there and, and get that yourself and if you want to enter some information you can come up into the the file which I got to pull out here oh my son's coming in uh, you come up here to file and uh, then you can come down here to make a copy you can make a copy for yourself and do any editing you want so say hi JJ hi <laughs> what do you bud Okay, go do your next thing then. Uh, can you stay off the wood floor? Thank you, bud. Uh, you can get it and take it somewhere else then. Thank you, bud. Homeschooling. Hey. <laughs> we were thinking about homeschooling uh, next year, but it came out that uh, we're doing it now. So, cool. <laughs> so, uh, let's actually dive into uh, this some more. So, basically, I, I have this broken down... Um, First thing here is the list of all of the chisels I tested. I, I would like to do some other ones in there. Um, I didn't do, uh, what was it, IBS. I didn't do the Nerex, um, uh, um, the prof not professional, what do they call it, the, the extra special one. Um, that one actually has the exact same steel as the Nerex standard. Um, it just has a different handle, different shape, and a few other things like that. Um, and there's a few others that I would like to test. Um, I didn't have any of the Buck, Buck Brothers. I didn't have any of the older um, chisels. And I talk about that in a bit in the video. Then here, this is the this is the, the subjective section of it. And this is where you can kind of play with what is important to you. And I know a lot of people out there, um, um, price is, is the most important thing. And so, like, I can change this to a 10. Um, and for me, you know, then a, t a feel, yeah, I don't care if it's, if it, feels cheap. I just want that. And then I can come over here to the hardness. Well, the hardness for me is, yeah, maybe a three. Um, sharpenability, I, you know, I want it to be easy to sharpen, so I'm going to put that up to a seven. Uh, keenness, uh, you know, I really don't know or care what that is. So then durability. Durability is important, but not quite as important as price. So I'm going to take that down to a six. And then what you can see is over, it takes all of these numbers and then compiles it over into this sheet here. And so this is the score that's given to it. So if you look at this with price being very high, um, you know, 110, the Craftsman Black Handle is really, really good. Um, the Robert Sorby is really, really good. The Narek Richter is still way up there. Um, but it's more or less from that. Uh, the Blue Steel, um, interesting to see how that came out that way. Um, probably from the, the sharpened ability. Yeah. Um, so Blue Steel stands out pretty well in that. Um, well, that, that's just the chisel. But then you calculate in the price, which we have a weighting of 10 on there. Then you come up here and suddenly it's like, ooh. Okay, uh, the Aldi is 166. The Harbor Freight Wooden is 150. Um, and so from that, it becomes very important that if, if you are really tied up on cash, then the Harbor Freight Wooden Chisel or the Aldi Chisel, those would be ones you'd want to get. Uh, next, the Craftsman Black, um, the Narex Richter, the, the Old Pile, um, Blue Steel. Um, and so you can actually get a comparison to price versus... Um, so you can actually change this to whatever you want. Um, so you can actually get your information off there. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, throw it in the chat, and I'm going to try and keep an eye on that. So if anyone pops up with that, we can keep going. So let's scroll over here a little bit farther and actually get into this. Um, I have links to the specific chisels that I'm talking about on here. Um, so if you have a question about, are you referring to this one or that one? Because some of them, like uh, um, the Ashley Isles, actually comes with a bunch of different uh, styles. Um, and so I have links to the exact one you want. Um, also, um, several of these are affiliate links. So if you use them, that really does help out the channel. So thank you for that. Um, and then the price as of when I released this, um, rounded to the nearest 15, uh, 50 cents. So this is, a, it was actually rather interesting to see the, the, the price comparison on these, uh, cause the Narex Richter, which came out on top is, uh, $35. 
um, which is a relatively s- steep chisel, but it's not up there with like the blue steel and the PMV 11, uh, the Lee Nielsen, uh, there, those are, you know, more expensive, <laughs> but still way more expensive than, uh, like the Aldi or the Harbor Freight wooden chisels. Uh, next, all of this data in here is just the, the general information about the chisel. Is it a tang? What's its total length? Where's the balance point on the handle? Uh, you know, it's, it's total weight, the listed size, the actual measured size, uh, the, the uh, where is it, the height of the sidewall. Um, some people are really picky about that. They want the sidewall to be almost non-existent or, um, well, in some cases here, zero, um, so that it can get right into the tight corners. Um, so for some people, that the height of the sidewall is a very important thing. Um, and uh, one of the interesting ones, like the Stanley Everlasting, is a, technically it's a tang chisel because it has a tang that is what's taking the force. Uh, but then it has a wrapped collar um, around the wood. So it's, all, it's both a tang and a socket-ish. Uh, but the tang goes all the way through the handle and then up to the striking button on the back side of it. So that one's a little bit different. Um, come over here to the uh, the starting sharpness. Uh, starting sharpness is the the numbers from all of the the actual tests. So the minimum is the sharpest I possibly could get it. Uh, so the the lower the number with sharpness, the sharper the steel. The maximum was the highest number that it sharpened um, down to. And then of course we have the average. And so this is basically how keen can you get an edge? How how sharp can you possibly get that steel? Um, and if you if you really really take a good steel down, the absolute sharpest it can get is around like 70, 75. Uh, that is just pure pure sharp. It cannot get any sharper just because steel uh, you can't get fewer mo- molecules on the edge. Um, so when some of these are getting down to like you know 79, 80, they're right down there at basically as sharp as, as steel can possibly get. So that was that was kind of interesting to see which ones could get sharp, and then like this Harbor Freight plastic chisel, I could not get that thing to be sharp. <laughs> it was it was really kind of funny, um, but yeah, most of them were most were pretty decent. There were, there were only a few that weren't you know actually getting usably sharp. So that was that was that was pretty surprising and and good information. Um, then we have the actual hardness. So we had them sent off to a lab to have this um, tested, and they actually put a dimple into it and test how hard the, the steel is. Uh, and so here we've got um, the the hardness from the, the working surface. So the um, they, they did two tests on every one just to make sure. Um, and then we have the average number between the two tests. And then there were a few tests that they did with outliers, um, such as in the Harbor Freight Plastic. Uh, there was one that went up to 64, um, <laughs> which was an outlier comparison to the other two. So that's marked here in red. Um, and then with the Blue Steel, they had several outliers uh, because those, uh, well, the Blue Steel is a bloom forged steel, so it's not as homogenous as others. Um, and then it's forge welded, so the back of the, the chisel is actually a much softer steel, which you can see over here. These are the numbers from the back of the uh, of the chisel, which most of them line up pretty well because they're, they're a homogenous steel. So the steel that's on the back is the same steel that's on the front, uh, with the exception of the blue steel that is uh, laminated, and that is a very, very different steel. Um, yeah. And there was one, oh, the Ashley Isles, that number isn't quite as... Uh, as 100% accurate as we'd like it to be uh, because the Ashley Isles had the rounded top, so they tried to put the dental, dimple in the center of the rounded top, but that might have skewed the measurement slightly with having the dimple in a different place. Um, and then the, the, the new pile, uh, we got that one in too late to actually put it into the hardness testing, so we don't have the, the exact hardness numbers on that. But I'm assuming it's pretty close to others that it is in, in sequence with, um, such as the, the Lee Nielsen and... Uh, or were those the, yeah, the Lee Nielsen, the uh, the blue st- uh, it was close to the blue steel, but the Ashley Isles it was pretty close to that one in, in its actual function. Um, and so that is the hardness. What a lot of people think is incredibly important, but it showed up that the hardness wasn't that important. Uh, the next section over here, the sharpenability. And what we did with this is we, we sharpened up the chisel to about as sharp as we can get it, and we took a before measurement. So we took how sharp was it before we got going. And then I took that edge and I stood it up vertically on my coarse diamond plate, held it vertically, and with the weight of the chisel, dragged it from one end of the plate all the way to the other. 
um, and I did that 10 times, and that would wear off the steel. And so what I wanted to measure is how much steel was removed with dragging the chisel all the way across. Um, and in doing so, I then took a second number of how dull was it afterwards, and this told me the difference of basically how much steel was removed from before to after. So the greater the number difference, the, the larger the difference between the first number and the second number, the more steel was removed. And therefore, the more steel that was removed, the easier it is to sharpen. Uh, and so we can bring that all over here to get the average numbers of all of these and then the average distant difference uh, between these. So the higher the number, the easier it is to sharpen. The smaller the number, the harder it is to sharpen. Um, and so that, is, uh, that was an interesting thing to come out. And these numbers fell fairly closely to matching up with the hardness, uh, with a few things like uh, the PMV11 actually sharpened a little bit easier than its counterpart's hardness. Um, and uh, uh, the, the, the Narex Richter, that one actually sharpened a little bit easier compared to its counterparts and hardness. Um, so that was, that was interesting data to, to see there. Um, then we can come over here and get into the actual durability tests. Uh, and so in this one, we've got here the, oops, sorry, let's see if there's any questions. Uh, yeah, poor man, I'll get to that question here in just a moment. If anyone has any questions, throw them in the chat. I'm going to be answering them in a moment once I just get through this section here. Because I want to get this all out so if people want to watch this, they can actually see more data in this. We have the average durability here. And this is the average number uh, from all of these. So in each of these tests, we took a before measurement of how sharp it was. Then we put it into the set, setup and saw how many strikes it took to cut through the media. And then we took a measurement afterwards. And so the difference between the two measurements gives us how much it was dulled during the use. And so the greater the number here, the duller it got. In other words, the worse the chisel performed. The smaller the number, the better it performed. Um, and so this would then give us, we did three tests of each one, averaged them out, and then got the average dis difference. So then we took all of these differences from every one of these tests and averaged them all out, and that's what gave us these numbers over here. So this number is the average of all of these columns over here, all of the difference columns. Um, so this number may or may not be as vital, um, but it was very interesting to see how it, uh, how it compared. Um, and yeah. Uh, so then that is basically the, the run through on the test. Um, and then to clarify all these, we have them in Douglas fir at 20, uh, 20 degrees, then Douglas fir at 25 degrees, Douglas fir at 30 degrees, then hickory, hickory at 25, hickory at 30, lignum vitae at 20, 25, and 30. Um, and then we put all that data down here into the charts down below so that we could actually get a, a little bit better view of uh, what all is going on. So these are all split up by the Douglas fir at the three different sharpnesses. And down below, then we have the, uh, the, uh, um, the 20 degree with the three different woods. So you can compare and contrast back and forth. So yeah, this is a, a lot of information. And there were some very interesting little tidbits that came out in this. So let me answer a few questions. And then uh, I'll point out some of the interesting things that I, that I found in this. Uh, so let's see. Number one. Uh, the poor man. Uh, so Erwin Marples actually did okay in the sharpness test. Yeah. Um, yeah let me come over here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So we have the the Erwin Marples here um, in the the actual durability of it um, was was not as good as others. It, the actual durability of how the edge came out was actually a two out of ten. Um, yeah, and some of these actually ranked negative. Um, but that being said it's still a chisel. It still cuts wood. It just, it dulled quicker than some of the other ones. I mean, the, the best performing one was the, the file 20 year and the Nerex uh, Richter, which were pretty close. Uh, but both of those raked, it, um, were, were ranked an eight out of 10. Um, that, uh, the keenness, it actually did up pretty well at 8.5. Um, so it was very good on that. And then the, the sharpen ability, it is an easier one to sharpen. It is a softer steel, so it makes it easier to sharpen. Um, yeah, hardness, it is a bit softer. Uh, feel, that, that's, the, that's the interesting one, is because the, the interesting thing about the Irwin marples is it, they put the exact same steel, but you can buy it with a bunch of different handles. Um, and so the one I got was a plastic handle with a metal, um, metal cap on it. 
Um, and I really don't like the feel of it. It just, it feels crummy. Um, and so that's why I gave it, a, you know, a two out of 10. But you can get them with different shaped handles and different, uh, different types. Um, so you'll get the exact same steel. You can just get, you know, different handles put on it. Um, and then price, well, 12 bucks. That's really not that bad. Um, so, yeah. Um, so to answer, yeah, they did relatively well. Um, it all depends on, you know, what weights do you put down here? What values do you actually give them? Uh, when you go to a number, hardness, durability, etc., would you say whether higher is better or lower? Um, just to get a better understanding. Yeah, so in this in this section here, it is all ranked on a 1 to 10 scale. Um, so these are all of the numbers of their ranking and in, in, in 1 to 10. Um, so 1 being a bad number, 10 being a good number. And then in some of these, like the, the Harbor Freight Plastic got a negative number um, because it, it, it just did not perform well. Um, <laughs> it would get bad. Um, so the, like the Harbor Freight Wooden... Um, really didn't do that well either but it still cut the wood and as long as you're not doing lignum vitae you know it can work you just have to sharpen it more often um, so that's that's where these numbers come out when you actually get into the numbers over here different things are different items so like in this um, sharpness the lower the number the better it is in the hardness um, depending upon what you want the higher the number the harder the steel um, but the harder the steel, the more often it's going to chip. The softer the steel, the better chance it's going to curl over rather than chip. Um, then into the sharpenability, uh, the, the higher number means it's easier to sharpen. The lower number means it's harder to sharpen. Um, and then when we get into the cutting, the lower the number, the more durable it is. The higher the number, the less durable it is. Um... Like you just did. So I hope that answers your question, RJ Tumble. Maybe just put a note in the chart. That would be an interesting idea to put a note up in the, the top. Lower numbers are better. Well, I mean, I, I really can't say lower numbers are better, higher numbers are better, because, uh, you know, when it comes to hardness, do you want a slightly softer steel or do you want a really hard, brittle steel? Um, you know, softer steel is going to roll the edge. A brittle steel is going to chip the edge. So you actually want something kind of in the middle. So higher may or may not be better than lower. Um, sharpenability, again, um, do you want a chisel that's easy to sharpen? In which case, then you're going to be getting a, a softer steel that will roll. Or do you want something that's harder to sharpen but will stay on a little longer? Um, so I really can't say a higher number is better or a lower number is better um, other than the average. Um, so, yeah. Uh, one with the light color wood handle and others were dark looking wood handle. Uh, well, oh, uh, what Narex were you using? Um, I was using the, um, yeah, Narex comes in a bunch of different types. Um, so I was using the Narex Standard. There's the Narex Standard and the Narex Premium. Um, and all of their chisels fall into those two categories. The Narex Standard comes with the light wood or the dark wood, the torrified. Um, and in both of those cases, it's the exact same steel. Um, also with the Premium, it comes in a couple different handle types you can get with the Premium. The Narex Standard and the Narex Premium use the exact same steel in their in their chisels. So theoretically, the steel and cutting durability and edge retention um, all should be the exact same whether you're working with a Narex Standard or a Narex Premium. The big differences in those is the handle design. The Narex Standard has a ferrule top and bottom um, and has the, the same angle running all the way down the, the sides of the, the iron. The Narex Premium has a, a tapered angle on the sides of the iron, uh, which is harder to make, so it costs a little bit more. Uh, it also has only the ferrule on the bottom of the chisel. It doesn't have a ferrule on the butt of the chisel. Um, and so there, there are differences in how they look, their appearance, and their feel. But the actual steel that's being used, there is no difference between the Narex Standard and the Narex Premium. Um, so all of the Narex should fit into that, with the exception of the new Narex Richter which is a completely different steel. It's a cryo um, steel, so it's a 
Well, it performs better. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, the big difference between the, the light handle and the dark handle is the dark handle is a torified wood. Uh, from what I understand, I don't know if they make a dark handle that's not torified. Um, and so it is a, a more durable wood. Uh, and so some people really like that. Um, so just a different preference in handle type. But the one I used was the, the light handle Nerex standard. Um, if you plan on lots of people consuming this, maybe note somewhere indicating what you're saying now. Yeah, and that, that's, that's actually the reason I'm making this video is I'm going to have links to this video in there because I want to actually um, explain all of this so that when people want to, I can, I can go into detail. Um, putting in some notes works okay, but there's always going to be more questions. Um, and so I'm actually going through and explaining it. This is kind of the, the answer to that. Um, is that pile uh, 20 years, actually 20 years old? Um, yes, yeah, no, it is actually, um, it was um, provided by um, a friend uh, who had it. And uh, so I, I, I assumed that it would be the exact, sa the exact same. And so he sent me that one. And I did the testing. And I was like, wow, this is actually performing really, really well. I'm happy with this. Um, but it ended up being, um, we wanted to see, you know, does the modern one, because the modern one is shaped differently and has a, a slightly different features. And no, the modern one um, didn't hold up to it. And so I don't know if that 20-year-old version of it was just because uh, maybe it was bad testing. Uh, maybe it was that it had, uh, you know, it came from a batch that was especially good. Maybe they, they changed their formula. Um, I'm not really sure. Um, but it, uh, it, the, the old one really surprised me. And yes, it was, uh, it was 20 years old. He bought it back in uh, the late nineties. Um, uh, I guess we couldn't grade them to those. We could attach our own handles or the handles are easily to easy to modify. Yeah. You know, that, that's one of the, the things, you know, for me, one of the most important things is the, the handle feel. And so that's why, you know, for me, I'm going to rank the, the handle 10. I'm going to rank the price like a 2 because I'm going to be using this day in and day out for years and years and years. And if I don't, if I'm not comfortable with the handle, if I'm not comfortable with the steel and it's not what I want, I, I would rather spend the money and, you know, save up for it and, and get good stuff. Um, but when I was first getting into woodworking, price was the predominant thing. I was limited to a budget of about $12 a month. Um, yes, I built my shop on $12 a month, in which case Harbor Freight wouldn't handle chisels. That's what I'm getting. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's, that's what I originally did get. Um, you know, hardness for me is really not important. I'm going to give that a one because, yeah, sharpenability is not really important to me because, you know, I'm, I'm going to sharpen it and stropping, there really isn't that much difference between them. Um, keenness, that is rather important to me because when I want to use it as a good pairing, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that. So I'm going to give that a, like a six. Um, and durability, durability, whoop, not a 56, I'm going to give it a six. Um, and durability for me is, is probably the most important thing about the the chisel other than the handle and so that I'm going to give it an eight and so once I actually give all of these weights I can come over here and see you know regardless of the price the, the the chisel test comes out over here and I can see the differences in them so the Narex Richter um, 223 the pile is a 215 the old one um, and so you can actually come through here and see there's a reason that I went out and got uh, Narex Richter's ch Narex Richter chisels um, but if I come over here into the price, because I weighted the price so low, there really isn't going to be that much difference between it. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely coming here, you know, put your weights into it. What What's important to you? Uh, because I, I can give as much information and data in this as possible, but until you come in here and say, you know, what's important to you, um, that's that. So you, you can make a copy of this. So if I, let me bring this down so I can show you. You can get into this file. Uh, come up here to file, come over here to make a copy. You can make a copy of it yourself and you can do all of the editing in here and actually change it to, to match what you want. Um, and if you like in the hardness here, um, I have the harder the steel, the better it is. Um, so the hardest steel in this was the blue steel. And so that got closest to a 10 and the softest steel in this was the Harbor Freight 
the wooden handle one. Um, and so that got down to a, you know, a 2.9. And then the sharpenability, the easier it is to sharpen, the better. Um, and so therefore, the, the, the softer the steel, those ones tended to sharpen a little bit better. And the really hard steel, like the blue steel, tend to sharpen a little harder. Um, with the caveat, I put the note in here that it's laminated, and so the sharpenability on that is adjusted because um, the softer steel on the back makes it a little bit easier to sharpen, but the harder steel on the edge makes it a little harder to sharpen. So it's, it's kind of a wash, but... Um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's where the subjective data comes in because you, you can't just live on the objective data. You've got to throw some of that in there. Um, thumbs up. Awesome. Thanks, man. Um, I think switching the handles out would change the feel of the chisels and then change the ranking on James's. Yes. Um, so... The, the ranking for the feel I have in here, all of this data on the actual chisel, its measurements, all came off of the chisels I have, which are the ones in the, the links here. Um, and many of these do come with different handles or different blade shapes. Um, so there, there's different things on that. And, and so every one of those different handles is going to have a different feel. It's going to have a different balance. It's going to have a different, you know, a, a different hand likeness. Um, so... That will, will change things. But most of the companies do offer different handles with them. Is there any reason to choose hard, st hard steel chisel when the pile's keenness and durability is highest? Um, yeah, and that, that's why I don't give hardness much of any weight at all. Um, the, the hardness of the steel is not a good indicator to its durability. Uh, it is a good indicator to its sharpenability. Um, there's, there's a pretty close correlation between sharpenability and hardness, but there is not a great correlation between hardness and durability. Um, and keenness, there is a little bit, but not as much. Um, you know, some of the, the most keen ones were the, these really hard ones, the, uh, the blue steel. Um, I mean, but like the, the, the PMV-11 um, and the, the old pile, um, those had an incredibly keen edge. I could get those beautifully sharp. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, and the, the keenness is how sharp I can possibly get the edge. And the problem with that is the sharper you get the edge, the faster it can dull. So if you get that edge incredibly sharp and then you take it as a mortising chisel and you beat on it, there's a chance you're going to chip that edge off, um, rather than, you know, wearing it down. Um, so keenness may or may not be a, a good indicator. Uh, yes. Sorry, I got a child here. You're done? Okay, go play. I'll be up in a bit. So yeah, those are... Um, is there a reason hard steel chisel when peffle keenness and durability is at highest? Yeah, sorry. I, I, I hope that answered your question. I don't know if that did. Sorry, JJJ. My son would get a kick out of his name's JJ. Uh, what... What ones felt the best in your hands? Um, to me, the one that felt the best was the Narex Richter. It just had it had a really nice feel to it. The, the it's the only one with a leather bumper in, in between. Um, so when the the tang goes, here, let me go grab them. I'll be right back. Um, I've got a few of good examples, as I can't carry them all right now. Um, so these are ones that I really liked the, the feel of them, and the the Narex Richter has some. You know, it, it's just got a, it's got a good finish. I, I like the ash handle. Um, that is, it's a it's a good design. Um, it has a stainless steel ferrule. It's got this little leather ring here in between the the blade and the ferrule. So there's a it just it's. It's a really, really sharp chisel, and it feels good in the handle. The only thing I would like is I'm thinking about octagonalizing this and just putting um, a couple flat spaces on here so you have an octagonal handle. Um, the Robert Sorby, I really like the feel on this. It's just a, it's a clean, smooth handle. It's got a good transition from one to the other. Um, I, I really like that. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very good handle. Um, 
the the blue steel this is a very traditional japanese style handle and i know a lot of people really really like this <laughs> i just find this to be an annoying handle it just doesn't feel good um so again it's personal preference um the pmv11 i like i like the handle feel on that it's a really good shape but i mean with all of these if you don't like a handle take the handle off and make a handle you do like and i was actually uh, i was about to do that with my um my all these chisels uh, but then after this test, I saw how much I was like, I was really, really liking the, the steel on this. I was like, nope, we're going to get uh, a set of these. Um, what ones felt the best to you? Yeah, it's, uh, what glove size are your hands? I'm usually a large, um, so that's that. And that, that, that's also a very important thing about, you know, how what size your hand because I know this one would be very big in my wife's hand she would probably really like the uh, the uh, the Ashley Isles it's a much more slender smaller handle um, so that's that um, so if anyone has any questions go ahead and throw them in there otherwise I'm going to be wrapping this up here in a minute um, some of the the really interesting data that came out to me was actually looking at these uh, between the 20, 20, 25, and 30 degree. And I'm actually going to do another series here where I'm also going to test um, 30, I'm going to test 35 degree and uh, 40 degree. Uh, yeah, 35 and 40 degree and see um, is there a steep increase in the amount of uh, the amount of hits that required to cut through it in relation to the durability. Um, because basically, as you get a higher angle, your durability of the blade goes up, but in many cases, your um, the amount of work it's going to take to push that through goes up as well. Uh, so there, there's a bit of a balance there. And with these lower angles here with the 20 degree, uh, we got a lot more chipping, a lot more rolling, and those would dull faster, thus requiring more impacts to get through. And so we saw an, an almost always an increase in that it took less work with a higher angled chisel to push it through the work because it dulled slower. Um, but at some point that's going to level out and you're start gonna, you're gonna start getting more work because the angle is higher even though it's not dulling as fast, it's just going to be harder to push through. Um, so I'm, I'm wanting to see that data, but I didn't want to complete I didn't want to have that in this into this one as well. Are we still looking at six hours ish on Saturday. Yes, I'm hoping to have uh, information on that coming out um, a little bit later today. I'm gonna be making a uh, plow plane on Saturday. And so I'm gonna do a full live video, something around you know four to six hours, depending upon how long it takes me to make that. And I'm, uh, I'm trying to find a block of firewood that'll pull it out and so we'll make, um, I'm actually, I'm thinking I'm gonna grab my, uh, my um, Aldi chisel, my uh, eight millimeter Aldi chisel and uh, turn that into a plow plane um, because now I have my uh, Narex Richters. Um, thought that might be an interesting way to do it. Uh, will you repeat the test with mortise chisels? Um, I, there are a lot of other ways I can take it. I don't think I will um, because a lot of the data I'm seeing from this chart is, is applicable to mortise chisels as well in both the angle and in um, in the type of steel and there's there's a lot of things in here that are are pretty clear I, you know the let me come down here um so like the lee nielsen the blue steel the pmv11 the um here, let me actually come down to one that's a little more telling let's come down to um here ah, here we are ligna vitae at these ones so these you got like the the old file the narex richter the Lee Nielsen, the Blue Steel, the PMV11, the Ashley Isles, the Pile, the new ones, these are all very reputable, very high-end brands. And the steels on most of these are, are pretty similar with the exception of the PMV11, the Blue Steel, and the, uh, the, the Narex Richter. They're all basically the, the same thing. Yeah, it might be O1 or A2. Uh, uh, um, and they're they're all going to give you about the same response and so you can you can take this data over and get a, a general idea of how your mortising chisel will work as well um, I may end up doing this um, but 
I don't know. <laughs> this is a lot of work. This is, this is about a year's worth of work. So um, I'm, I'm hesitant to, to open up another can of worms, um, but we'll see. I am thinking about doing a test coming up on some auger bits because we've had several companies come out with, with new auger bits. Um, and that'd be kind of fun to, to play with and, and see how well they do. Um, Uh, do you see if some required more or less hits to cut through the wood? Um, you know, that's that's data I collected in here. So you can actually see uh, the middle number on each of these lines is the number of strokes, the number of hits it took to get through the wood. And, um, oh my, i got to fix that, that line there. It's driving me bonkers. There, that's better. OCD kicking in. <laughs> um, and there was a, a fairly close representation that the less hits meant that the steel was, that the, it was more durable. And there was a pretty close correlation to less hits meant the edge was staying sharper longer. However, in some places there weren't always that, that there wasn't always that, that close correlation between it. Um, and so that's something I want to actually get into this data and, and play with a bit more and see what the correlations are between the number of strokes and the durability of the, the, the chisel. We'll see how that comes out. Um, you mentioned the Aldi chisel on your channel before. Do you know about when they're available? Um, they used to sell them, uh, several years ago, they used to sell them every year for Father's Day. Um, they, they changed it to August about three years ago. Um, and we haven't seen them in stores for the last, uh, almost two years now. So yeah, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if we're going to see them again. Um, also in Europe, last time they sold them, they sold them with a plastic handle and uh, apparently from results I've heard there and even Paul Sellers, um, they, the, the plastic handled ones, they changed the, the steel on them and they just, they weren't, they weren't any good anymore. Um, the last time they sold them here in the U.S., they still sold them as wooden handles, but they haven't done that in almost two years. Um, so I don't know if they are going to sell them anymore. I think it, it's sounding like it's something that doesn't exist anymore, but we will see. Uh, I have heard um, of a couple people who are trying to find the manufacturer of them, and see, seeing if they could uh, do smaller runs and sell them to hand tool woodworkers, but uh, we'll see. Um, do you use pig stickers for mortises? Um, yes and no. Um, if I'm cutting like a, a, a quarter inch or a three eighths of mortise and it's going to be pretty deep, then I probably will be using a pig sticker or mortising chisel. Um, it's, it's fast, efficient. It's just, it's what it's designed to do. And it, it does it a little bit better than a bench chisel. Um, does it do a lot better than a bench chisel? Not really, but it does do it a little bit better. And so I, I do try and use it there. Um, but that, Anytime, if I ever bore out a mortise, then I use the bench chisel to clean it out. I don't use a mortising chisel because I do a lot more, you know, paring and cleaning because you got to turn the circular holes into round holes. Um, but I do have a whole video where I go into pros and cons and balance between mortising chisel and uh, bench chisel. So if you want to see that. Uh, I've looked into... Uh, for Narek Richter... Um, can you tell us if the side edge comes to a point or is it rounded to prevent cutting? Um, it is ever so slightly rounded. So this, this won't, it won't cut my finger on the edge. Um, it has been, it has been polished. Um, so I mean, it, the, the sidewall on it, here, let me come back over here to the edge here. So we can come over here and, and look in the actual um, information here. The, the sidewall on the Narex Richter is a um, 0 0.2 um, and so basically it was originally ground down to be zero um, but they've come back and polished it down and so now there's an ever so slight radius on that edge so it's not going to slice your finger um, but it's you know 0 0.2 millimeters so it's incredibly tiny um, and i really like that and it's not like like some of these that like when you when you first get an Ashley Isles, uh, these edges are as sharp as this edge. <laughs> They're um, they they will slice your finger wide open. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I think that is about it. Unless anyone has any questions, we will wrap this one up. Um,
Oh, as a, a side note, if anyone is going to get the Narex Richters, um, I've heard from the uh, the distributor that sells them, uh, which is uh, Tay Tools, um, that they they're only making them in small batches, and so they are uh, they have a certain amount out right now, but it might be a little while until they get more. You finish your homework? Okay, I'll be out with you in a minute. You can go play. Um, so if you do want to get it, hop on it now, because from what I understand, there's only about a hundred or so in stock or currently made. Um, but uh, they'll be they'll be getting more eventually. It just uh, you might have to wait a little while. Um, yeah, and that, that that was one of the things that really surprised me because when when I saw you know the cryo steel, it was like yay a new fangled thing. Someone else is doing some other small change and calling it revolutionary. Um, and I, I I did not you know I, like like PMV eleven. I really like PMV eleven. Um, it 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 is ever so slightly better than O one and O two. And if you really get into it, you can feel the difference. But for most people, it's a little bit gimmicky. Um, and so I, I kind of felt the same about the, the cryo steel until I tried it. And I'm like, oh, okay, there is there's actually a pretty significant dis difference. So I'm, <laughs> I'm happy with that. Um, how would we find the same chisel under a different name? I think you're talking about the Aldi chisel. Um, the Aldi chisel, the brand for it is, uh, I can't remember, but I have not found it anywhere other than Aldi. Uh, occasionally you'll see someone reselling a pack that they bought at Aldi, uh, but I haven't been able to find it and under another name. So that's one of the things we, um, I, I know of at least two people who were trying to find who made them and where they could get them, um, but I, I have not heard. Um, yeah, <laughs> my son likes poking in there. Uh, yeah, I haven't found the Aldi chisel branded anywhere else. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Well, I think that'll about do it. Uh, so if you do have any questions, feel free to send me that, and I will be answering as many comments as I can on the video. So I think that is it for today. Let me pull this back out. Um yeah, so this Saturday we'll be doing a live video where I'm going to be making a grooving plane um, completely uh, live. So if you want to come join for that, uh, come hang out. We'll have a bit of fun. So I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Okay, now I've got to find where this off button is because it's hard when it's all buried like this. <laughs> there it is. Bye. <laughs>